so your warm up is in the AP classroom. The when you open it, it's just dated to twenty eight twenty. Um, it's just three questions on kinetics. They're multiple choice, so you should not be using your calculator. You need to read the words carefully so you can um, be able to answer them. So it's just these three questions. Submit it when you're done so I can see how you do on that. Do that first. After you submitted it, then you can, so pause it until you submit it, and then um, come back and I'm going to go over them. Yay, one finger. Okay, number one. Uh, if we take a look at that, you have to read the words really carefully. It says, when the concentration of substance B in the reaction is doubled. So I, in my brain eyeballs, I see like just adding a big scoop of it in there. All other factors being held constant, it is found that the rate, rate means how fast it's happening is unchanged. So that means it doesn't matter if I add more of it, it didn't make it go faster. The most probable explanation is that A, the order of the reaction, that means monkey, is one. That would not make sense because if it was one, then if I added more, it should make it go a lot faster. B, the substance is not involved in any of the steps. That can't be true because it added up to the overall reaction. Nice job. Two is right. Very good. Uh, C, the substance is involved, is not involved in the rate determining step. That is it. It exists, it just doesn't affect the rate. Remember the rate determining step is up to and including the slow step. So it must be after that. So that one is C. Did you get that one? Four, two. Usually they give you the graphs and they did not give you the graphs this time. They just gave you the data table. Remember, you're looking for the one that's linear. So this natural log column is a constant slope. That means it's linear. So that means it's first order. If it was zero order, it'd be the first, you know, list one. First order is list two. And then second order is list three. So that one is B. And then for C, when we have a mechanism, mechanism is just a fancy word for steps. To get the overall reaction, we add them together. So when I add these two together, I have two ICLs and I have two HCLs. So automatically, I've eliminated A and C. So it's got to either be B or D. The rate law comes from up yeah. to and including the slow step, but just the reactants. So all I have is one H2 and one ICL. So it has to be D. If it was two ICLs, it'd be B. So the last one is D. Okay. Let's take a look at the quiz. I need you to go into Schoology. So go into Schoology. I temporarily put this quiz in there because you are going to have to do something extra today and look very closely at things. So you're going to want your own copy of the answers. So go into Schoology, open up this file. I am frozen up there, bless you, which I wonder how that went. For the quiz. If you got less than two hands, that means that you need to do some work, which means either you just didn't catch it while I was teaching it, maybe you didn't have time to do the homework, maybe you didn't do the homework, either way, now I'm forcing you to do the homework. So if you want your points back, you need to do this extra sheet as well. Um, otherwise, it's just a normal corrector quiz, do the quiz corrections, but one more added layer of learning. This little half sheet is for you to write down what you learned after you corrected. So this is how it's going to work. So like if I got number one wrong, I would write number one on my little half blank sheet and I would say, oh, now I know that going from a solid to a gas. So like phase change is more important than the number of moles. Most of the time when people got it wrong, it's because they said, 
it's because the moles went up. That is true, but that's not the most important reason. Going from seatbelts to having a party is a way bigger entropy change than just having more people at the party. So that maybe I would write, I learned that um, base change trumps the number of moles. Okay? So at whatever ones you got wrong, you're not going to list why you got it wrong. Do not tell me why you got it wrong. Tell me what you know now. Okay? Not what you did wrong, but what you know now. Reinforce what you just learned. It's just like another way to help you remember it. Okay, so for number one, number two, this quantity T delta S, and I'm going to go fast because you have this in front of you to make your corrections later. This T delta S quantity has to be bigger than the H quantity to make G negative. Letter A, delta H, remember, is kilojoules. It's the only letter that's kilojoules. So you need to be in kilojoules. Do some math. Fancy R is in joules. Another example, delta H is not in there. So you should be in joules. Do some math. You guys, for C, we've literally answered this probably five times on a test. Every test for the last five tests I've given this to you. But let's talk about it again. If it's endothermic, heat is like a reactant. If I increase my temperature, it's going to shift to the product side. Products over reactants. So now my numerator just got bigger. Bless you. So your K got bigger. Okay. If you wanted to do it quantitatively, like some of you are like, rat length, the T got bigger. You have to go back to like the very first delta G because temperature changes entropy. Entropy would change G, which then you could do rat length for, so you really can't just change the temperature and rat length to bigger. That's not really how it works because all the other numbers would be different. Okay? For letter D, um, going from a liquid to a gas is a bigger change. The other one just from gas to gas. Letter E are all the words for set it equal to zero, solve for T. It has H in it, so it has to be kilojoules. Okay, for chapter 20, things that are reduced, the number goes down. Things that are oxidized, the number goes up. There's a significant number of people that wrote their oxidation as a reduction. If it's being oxidized, that means the number has to go up. So you need to write it with the number going up from a 0 to a 3 plus. Like you have to know the difference between oxidation and reduction. Okay? These are reduction potentials. It shows them as being reduced. This is not being reduced, though. In this voltaic cell, it's being oxidized. Its number has to go up. So zero up to a three plus. Three to a zero is down. You need to be able to write. I think I said even at the beginning, I'm like, you guys are going to have to come up with these. This is tricky. You're going to have to come up with it. You have to come up with it. Okay. Cathode minus anode, negative knife. Uh, it's negative delta G, so it's spontaneous. Rat link. Q versus K. I pretty much gave you F. If you do not know how to draw voltaics, I think you just need to practice and study it. Uh, make sure your reduction side is gaining the electrons. Reducing means the number is going down. Electrons are negative. It's like adding plus a negative, plus a negative, plus a negative. A is that stoichiometry you learned, and B is good old gas stoichiometry. Read the words. Calculate the volume of CO2. Guess what? You only have grams of aluminum. That requires a mole ratio, friends. You can't solve for CO2 unless you convert to um, two CO2 from aluminum. Okay. I'm going to have to, like, this is going to be difficult for you. I need you to stop correcting your quiz because I need to go over the lab, and then you have work time. You can correct your quiz and work on all of your stuff. So I'm going to pull you away from it for a second. Can you please get out your lab?
The lab is going to be on Monday, and it will only be on Monday. I cannot leave this set up any longer than Monday. And I'm not over-exaggerating when I say it took Drew and I, between the two of us, at least six hours to get it ready. Those solutions take forever. They are so meticulous. Redox solutions, you know how it says like in an acidic solution and a basic solution? These are acidic solutions. That means everything is not made with water. Everything is made with sulfuric acid. That means that if you drip it on your paper, this will happen. It's a four and a half molar sulfuric acid solution. I cannot leave them out. I kept the freshmen away from that long enough, like it's really hard. Number one, the sophomores have to do projects back there. And three, I need to put those bottles in a dark room. The purple permanganate actually starts oxidizing just with the light and it'll start getting destroyed if I leave it much longer. It has to get cleaned up after Monday. Otherwise, all of that work we did of making the solutions, I'm just going to have to dump it down the drain. Um, also, it's time to go. So you have to be here on Monday unless, like, for some reason, like, you're on your, please don't give us all the flu or coronavirus or anything. But um, other than that, I expect you to be here to do the lab on Monday. It will be gone. I'm cleaning it up as soon as I can um, because it's just so much work. There's no lab video for it because it's the exact same thing that you just did with titration. So it has the drop counter. The axis is just going to be a little bit different. This is going to be milliliters like always just because the drop counter will do that. Instead of a pH meter, it's like a volt meter. Okay, so your y-axis isn't going to be pH. It's going to be in volts. But same game with like rinsing off the probe and all of that that we did last. Your curve is going to be almost the same thing, which is super interesting because the volts of a redox reaction, if you have the one side, the reduced side, and the oxidized side, when they combine, they start neutralizing, not by like pH, but by charge. Okay, so the electrons keep getting canceled, keep getting canceled. You're going to have an equivalence point. I'd run it a little bit past the equivalence point like last time so you can poke at it because you need this number here, right? You need your equivalence point like always, okay? It does have a color change to it, and it doesn't have a color change because an indicator. There's no indicator in it. It has a color change just based on the volts, which is super fun. Um, I think it's a really pretty lab. But it's so acidic, gloves, goggles, lab coats, okay? And just, I already preloaded the burette, so you won't have to really do much with it. Um, just to kind of be safe that way, but um, potassium permanganate will also permanently stain anything it touches. And it actually, it's a really pretty purple, but it stains in a really ugly brown. So do not wear your best like white outfit to school on Monday, okay? And we'll have lab coats and everything for that. Um, what you're going to be doing is down in your beaker is going to be your 25 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide, but it's acidified. It's not really hydrogen peroxide. It's sulfuric acid mixed with hydrogen peroxide. So even though it's in a hydrogen peroxide bottle that I bought at Walgreens, that's just to try to keep it dark. It's not really hydrogen peroxide. In your red is your potassium permanganate. Again, it's not. It's mixed with sulfuric acid, so just be careful. You're just going to run your titration. You're going to do two trials. This makes it look like it takes like 50 milliliters to run it. It's like seven and a half, so it's not much. You're going to do your two trials. Um, your analysis questions are just to balance the equation. So you could like totally do that ahead of time. You could do the analysis if you wanted to. And then number two is to calculate the concentration of the um, hydrogen peroxide. I'm sorry, your two calculations, your analysis will be on Schoology. Your concentration of the hydrogen peroxide is just regular old titration math from Chapter 4. We actually, like, started in our Chapter 4 notes because we have to kind of keep coming back to it. Maybe you'll remember it, but if you don't, that's where it's going to be. Okay? That'll be Monday. Six hours of setup will take you ten minutes to run two trials because it's just not that big of a volume. Yes. Okay, so no lab video on that. 
What I would like you to do though today is to look very closely at your quiz, correct your quiz. If you are in a position to do quiz correction, you're going to work on that. If you're not in a position to do quiz correction, I have the test review for you. The test is going to be Thursday. Okay, so today's Friday. Next Thursday, we'll take that test. Monday, we'll do the lab. Tuesday, you guys are easy team. Wednesday, we're going to do chapter six. And Thursday, we'll do the test review. If you've got less than two hands, you have a lot of learning to do, so I'm forcing you to do this worksheet.